Praise the Lord. Good morning, everyone. I thank God for another opportunity to come before you and uh, speak a word of encouragement on uh, this Tuesday morning. Today's February the 22nd, 2022. I give honor and praise to God who is the Lord of my life. I thank God for how he blessed us in our district meeting, San Antonio district meeting that we had the 17th through the 20th of this month. I tell you, God came in and poured out uh, every session that we had started on Thursday night and God blessed us. Uh, I was able to preach the word of God on Thursday night and I spoke from our national theme challenge that we face. And I know many of you say, well, pastor, I have many challenges. I don't just have one challenge, but I want you to know that God is prepared and God is able uh, to meet us in the midst of our challenges just like he met the three Hebrew boys in their challenge. He met uh, Daniel in the lion's den. God is meeting us today in the midst of our challenges. So no matter what we're faced with, uh, I use kind of as a subtopic, uh, what's your greatest challenge? And I know many of us have uh, a variety of challenges. We have diverse challenges, but God is able to strengthen us, encourage us, and bring us through every challenge that we face. I want to thank God for the uh, apparel store there at Ingram Park Mall, uh, Suma set apart. And I thank God that we are, as children of God, we are set apart for work. We are a chosen generation. And I'm going to read those scriptures in just a moment. But I just want to thank God for him and for him being the uh, the Lord of our life. And, and we have somebody that we can call on, that we can count on, that we can depend on. So I praise God today. I praise God for uh, this beautiful Tuesday morning. And I thank God. I have no sad stories on today. God came in on Friday night of our district meeting. And our district missionary, Mother Gerald Denny, she spoke a powerful, powerful and anointed word of God. And I went back on Saturday morning for the Women's Day session. And I heard some great speakers on that Saturday morning. And then for the climax, for the apex, for the uh, culmination of our district meeting, our district superintendent, Bishop Jeffrey Sturb, uh, he spoke a dynamic word on Sunday afternoon. So we had a wonderful time in the Lord. Uh, each one of us talked about the challenge that we face in one variety or another. But I want you to know today that, and I want to use kind of as a um, uh, topic of discussion, a word of encouragement for the saints of God today, that we are challenged, but we are chosen. Challenged but chosen. So you have to know, you have to know whose you are. You have to know who you are to be able to withstand the fiery darts that the devil hurls at us every day, every day. He doesn't take a day off. He doesn't take a playoff. You know, every day he's at his job trying to discourage, trying to, 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 to get people to give up on God. But God said, I will not give up on you. So let's be in the mindset, saints of God, that we will not give up on God. I want to read from 1 Peter, the second chapter, and there's 10 verses here. So I'm just going to read each one of those verses on today, beginning at verse number one. 1 Peter, verse chapter two. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisy and en envies and all evil speaking. You know, this is a day that we're living in now where people are, uh, at each other's throat. They're, 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 they're really at odds with each other uh, for a variety of reasons. But, you know, the Bible instructs us as children of God. And we can't just do like the world. We can't just be as common as the world and, and flow as the world does. We don't conform to the things of this world. We have been changed. We have been created to, to, to be a light for this world, to be the salt of this earth. We have a, we have a mission saints of God, and we cannot allow ourselves to be pulled in to the way of thinking, to the actions and behaviors of the world. We have to be set apart. We have to be set apart for the work of the kingdom of God. How can we win anybody if we are just as um, worldly as the world? There has to be a difference between clean and unclean. There has to be a difference between holy and unholy. There has to be a difference between righteous 
and unrighteous in all that we do, we need to we need to acknowledge the Lord. We need to seek his faith, seek his wisdom, seek his guidance on what to do and how to do. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. When I was a child, I thought as a child. I acted as a child. I spoke as a child. I behaved as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. I see too many believers today, if you will, too many Christians today that are still walking around with bottles in their hand, still acting like children, still talking like children, still uh, uh, versed in the word as children. We need to mature every day. Every day we need to go deeper. We need to go deeper, just like we're doing on this Tuesday right now. We are praying four times a day. We're praying 6, uh, 30 a.m. we started. 9 a.m. we pray, 12 noon we pray, and 3 o'clock in the afternoon we pray. We do that every Tuesday, every Friday. We pray for 15 minutes each one of those time segments. We're fasting throughout the day. Some things are only going to change. Some, some demons are only going to come out through fasting and prayer. We have to pray, saints of God. The Bible said in 2 Chronicles 7 and 14, if my people that are called by my name would humble themselves and pray. How, how can you be a saint of God? How can you say you love God, but you don't, you don't want to communicate with him? We have to pray. We have to turn from our wicked ways. Seek his face. If we want this land to be healed, if we want to hear from heaven, we need to make sure that we are doing what God has instructed us to do. Praise the Lord. If so, ye, if so, be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious, to whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. Sometimes we're ostracized. Sometimes we're set aside. We're pushed back. We're, we're overlooked. Sometimes, as children of God, as a believer, sometimes this is the challenge that you have. And the, the challenge comes with you being able to hold your peace and allowing the Lord to fight your battle. Not try to take it into your own hands. Not do as you used to do when you were a man or woman of the world. But now we allow the Lord to step in. We allow God to word our mouth. We allow God to give us what to do, how to react. If we would hold our peace and let the Lord fight our battles, I believe that things would work out a whole lot differently. How can you uh, interact with somebody if you're, if you're reviling back at them as they revile back at you? The Bible says that a soft answer turns away wrath. We have challenges. We do. The Bible says in Psalms 34 and 19 that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God is able to deliver us. He's able to bring us out of them all. We go through challenges. Yes, we do. But God is righteous. God is holy. And God is faithful to his word. And what God said in his word, you can believe that he's going to be faithful to it. Verse 5 says, Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Unto you, therefore, which believe he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the stone that the builders rejected, the same is made the head of the corner. You know, sometimes you may be at the back of the line. You may be at the backside of the mountain like David was. You know, other people were out in the public, in the in the in the view of, uh, uh, of those that were making the selection for the next king. But David was on the backside of the mountain, taking care of his father's sheep. 
There he was, but God saw him. And when the anointing oil did not rest on any of those other sons of Jesse, then Samuel asked him, do you have another son? And then that's when David was brought in and the oil rested on him. But David didn't just immediately become the king. He was a young teenager. So there was another 15 years that he continued to serve, been anointed as the king, but he continued to serve just like he always did. Brothers and sisters, I want to let you know that it's difficult for you to be an effective leader, an anointed leader, if you can't follow anybody. You can't follow instructions. You can't follow the leadership that God has placed you under. You know, you want to be in charge. It's going to be difficult for you to have effective leadership if you cannot follow. You know, there's a book that I read years ago when I was in the school of ministry called The 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. It gives a lot of information. 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership by John Maxwell. Get a chance to get that book and read those. It'll be good for anybody that's in, in leadership right now. If you're a follower and you plan on being in leadership or if you're a leader currently and you just want to lead effectively, read that book. Unto you, therefore, which believe he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed or rejected, the same is made the head of the corner, and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. But ye are, here we are, we're challenged, but here we are, here's our designation right here. This is our identifying information that we need to know who we are. You are a chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that ye should show forth the praises of him who had called you out of darkness, hallelujah, into the marvelous light, which in times past, you were not even a people. You were not even counted. You, you didn't even amount to anything. But are now the people of God. Praise God. I could just give God praise right there. Which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. I read all 10 verses from uh, 1 Peter, the second chapter. Praise God. I thank God for the word on today. And saints of God, I want you to know today that we are going to face challenges. We are going to, we are going to be buffeted from time to time. But I want you to re recognize and realize and always remember that you are a chosen vessel of God. My word for you today, challenge but chosen. God bless you. May you have an outstanding Tuesday. May you have a blessed rest of this week. And I praise God for who he is in our lives. I want you to know that God loves you. I love you. And there is nothing you can do about it. Praise the Lord. We'll see you next Tuesday. If the Lord bless and says the same.